Hey, everybody, it is time. Welcome to our fabulous showcase hosted by myself and Dean Lewis. Hey there, everybody. So happy yeah. to be here. So we have Susanna Allen today, Susan Gilman, Sandra Shrett, Maurice Marcus, Tim Cusack, D. Ray Elizabeth, and Ryan Merritt. Oh my God, it's going to be a great show. Hey, Dean, how you doing? Hey there. I'm doing great, Judy. You know, uh, I always like to bring this up because everyone always wants to ask me the question, how did I get my skin tone to match my wall color? How well, do you do it? <laughs> Home Depot can do, just go in and say, I need frightened Caucasian. And uh, there you go. Oh, right. I love that. I love that frightened Caucasian. I, you know, um, let me, let me start things off by introducing, first of all, me, I, um, I wrote the Bible. That's right. I wrote, it's the new comedy Bible. I'm sure many of you have, have it. Um, and we've been working on turning. Basically, my philosophy is that every problem, no matter how wretched your life is, no matter how ill you are, no matter how broke you are, you can take those problems, turn them into punchlines, and have people come laugh at it. And in that laughter, there is this amazing feeling. I don't know, Dean, do you think it's better than sex? I do. Or do you remember? You know, it, it is better than sex because for no other reason, and it's cheaper and it lasts longer. <laughs> It really depends on how you're having sex, right, Dave? Well, it does last longer yeah, true, than, than 15 seconds. You're right. Um, <laughs> and what's awesome when you're comic, I mean, how often do you get this during sex? You get laughter and applause, right? And applause. Yay. So Yay. I want, I want to introduce, first of all, this man who is above me to the side of me, depending on your Zoom computer, God knows. We have been performing comedy, you know, we both performed in, you know, Atlantic City and Vegas, and now we're in friggin' rectangles. But what, I want to introduce him because um, each class is a comedy coach we, when we teach online stand-up comedy. And this class um, had the benefit, one of the most amazing men, you, you, you can give him any line. Any, any like really horrible thing and he could turn it into a joke. We should try testing that with some of the people who, uh, who are here today. We have some amazing people, Elijah, Larry, but also he is an Emmy award winning writer. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous. Let's give it up everybody. Let's hear you. Dean Lewis. Thank you, Judy. Dean, Dean Lewis, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Judy. You know, and it's with an introduction like that that we can firmly say to everybody here, no refunds. So, um, <laughs> but let's talk I'm about excited. our audience. Let's talk about who's in our audience today, because this is not just like an ordinary um, uh, boring Zoom. Um, we really want uh, to get to know you. So if you don't have a crying baby or a crying husband in the background, please unmute yourself. If you do have someone crying, just give them both a bottle. Please unmute yourself. We want to hear your laughs. Okay, so Kyle, Larry, Eric, uh, can we all unmute yourself? I'm going to ask you guys all to unmute. Okay, Brenda, um, if you can't unmute, let me know. And maybe there's, oh, Judah's here. Oh, my God, Judah's one of our past um, students. He's hysterical. Judah, unmute yourself. I want to hear your wonderful voice. Okay. Um, Hi. Hey, is that Judah? Yeah. Judah, what have you been doing since the class? You're so friggin' funny. Working. What? In, a, in an Wait office. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in a cube. So, wait, you don't look like you're seeing a cube now. Are you working? Are you getting paid to work while you watch our comedy showcase? <laughs> uh, sorry, can't hear you. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right, zip it, zip it. You're so freaking funny. All right, so 
Um, we're going to we're going to play some games now with all of you here before we start our fabulous show. The lineup for the show is uh, in the chat. And Jude, I'm going to hold you up here so you can help us as well with this. Um, love love having alumni, especially someone like yourself who um, uh, is is such a good writer. All right, so we're going to start with a premise. And we're gonna do a list of three. Now, do you remember Judah from the class what a list of three is all about? Or have you smoked just too many bowls and just have not a clue? Like, no, I, I remember what it, do you want tell everybody what a list of three is? A list of three, um, ideally the first two are realistic and serious and the third will catch people off guard and make them laugh. That was excellent. So Sounds Dean, why don't you start with the setup? And everybody, uh, write into chat the funny line. So we're going to set you up. Uh, Judy, you're going to do this too, but you always friggin' win this contest. And how many free <laughs> copies of the New Comedy Bible can you have? Right. Uh, but you can yeah. always give it away to someone. But we're going we're gonna to start with a setup. And Dean, why don't you take the lead about the setup for this? Yeah, let's do that. Well, since we're just a week away from Thanksgiving, I think it'd be good to get everybody kind of in that holiday mood. So... Our setup is going to be pretty simple today. There's three subtle clues. Your Thanksgiving may not be going great. There yeah. are three subtle clues. Your Thanksgiving is not going great. Okay, I'm going to send this out to everybody you can see in the chat. Okay. All right, so Judah, why don't you give us the unfunny part? Like, what are some really, because everybody uh, with stand-up, it's really all about the setup. So what are some three unfunny clues you're, that your stand-up's not, your um, Thanksgiving's not going great? Um, that's, uh, uh, See, it's hard for you to think of the unfunny ones, right? Yeah, right, that's right. hard. Okay, it's uh, all right. Um, uh, that the, the turkey was too small. Is that, mm -hmm. That's good, right? The turkey was too small. Not funny. That's good because we're getting towards the big one. Um, the chairs were uncomfortable. Chairs were uncomfortable. Okay, you hold on to yours, Judah, and let's see. <laughs> what is a totally crazy thing that could have happened at Thanksgiving that was just let your imaginations go wild on this. The first two are like, cheers, we're uncomfortable. Eh, the turkey was a little dry. That's how that's how Jews say it. The turkey, uh. it was a little dry. <laughs> All right, so that's 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 the first two, and then the third turn on yeah. it would be would <laughs> we got some coming in. All right, uh, by the way, Judy, you're going to be our judge on this. <laughs> and, okay, we have Susan Gilman, uh, who's performing tonight. Said no one RSVP. Yes. Okay. Uh, COVID. What about COVID, Eric? COVID. The turkey had COVID. And the bird swine flu. All right, um, that sounds good. Um, Marcus said the turkey is still frozen. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, Elijah. Elijah says the turkey says, "Boy, this is more awkward than my last day on the farm." <laughs> oh, Elijah, you know I love that, Dean. I love it because it's an act out. Mm hmm. You know, and it's funny. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Susan Gilman. Yes, the turkey has COVID. <laughs> <laughs> it is still alive and coughing. Okay. All uh, the people fighting, no tur uh, they have a tofu turkey, which is worse than no turkey. That's funny, Elizabeth. Grandma just smoked her third choice. <laughs> <laughs> and is trying to put herself inside of the turkey okay that's good um and your uncle uh, ryan and your uncle decided to use his hunting rifle to sap his frustration on both of them okay we have kyle says your entire family made it this year <laughs> pretty funny <laughs> 
Um, Larry B, Larry, um, Larry says, oh, don't direct message to me, tell it to everybody. Um, do it to everybody, you can't see it, Jeffrey. You, you stay in bed all day, Turkey is eating you for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Judah, what's yours? Yeah, I had written there, uh, your mother-in-law offers to come early and help you cook. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Turkey died from the booster shot. <laughs> <Take him home. laughs> cool. All right. All right. We're going to. All right. So, uh, Josh, Judah, and Dean, why don't you discuss what do you think is the best one and why? Look through the chat, please. I'll play yeah. some music meanwhile. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da. I don't know, Judah. Which one do you like? I like, I like grandma just smoked her third joint. <laughs> you know, I can, I immediately picture it. You know? Yeah. It's always great with grandma jokes, you know. What is that with, with old, like about old women smoking pot, like that everybody thinks is so funny on YouTube. There are thousands of videos, old people smoking pot. Why is that so funny? I yeah, okay, no it's comment. just, it's so incongruent. So yeah, I like that one. Grandma smoked her third joint. I think that's. Oh, hmm. and who was that? Who was that? That's that? your well, that's boy. Someone that's from your the boy. class, though. That's someone from the class. Was that D-Ray? Yeah, it's D-Ray. All right. All right. Here's D-Ray. D-Ray, how you feel? You excited about doing the show today? Oh, I'm excited. Dude. I'm ready to go. I'm pumped up. Uh, you're pumped up. Okay. I'm going to everything, you know? All right, well, you just want an audio, audio copy of the New Comedy Bible. So um, as my people would say, mazel tough to you. Mazel tough. And <laughs> so I'm going to, uh, and Judah, I swear, I, 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 we got to stop. Do you live in LA? I live in outside of Philadelphia. Oh, shit. Well, then we're not having lunch. Okay. <laughs> but always a pleasure to see you. Great to see you again. Okay. All right. And everybody, if you would like a copy of the New Comedy Bible, there it is. I just, I think I've been discounted to Kmarted to uh, $8 now on Amazon, but uh, enjoy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our... 1200 showcase <laughs> the showcase <laughs> where that seth rogan has been in sherry shepherd has been in and now these people coming to us today are in and emceeing the show <laughs> ladies and gentlemen here he is dean lewis thank you everybody <laughs> thank you <laughs> and i gotta tell you i uh i love these showcases but i also don't like them because it's like uh not the last time i'll see everybody but it's always hard to say goodbye and you know, not, we're not going to be meeting every weekend and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, enough of me getting emotional. It's just been a rough day. <laughs> uh, let's get this show going. You know, this uh, first comic coming up. I'm a big, big fan. Very, very fun guy. Uh, everyone just sit back and have a great time. A really fresh perspective on a hot topic. And I only got to say this. Please welcome the one and only Marcus Muhammad. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> All yeah. right. Hey, hey, it's great to be on the same stage as Seth Rogen and Sherry Shepard. Hey, <laughs> you probably can't tell through Zoom, but I'm a really, really short guy. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And hey, I like being short. There are a lot of benefits. You live longer, you got plenty of leg room, and you get the best bosom hugs. <laughs> yes and they're nice too unless it's your aunt your grandmother or that cousin with man boobs <laughs> just weird <laughs> you can tell by my name i'm a i'm a black muslim hey but relax relax everybody just relax i don't worry i can't get you through zoom <laughs> it's it's so weird that that people still fear muslims because the greatest threat to america are muslims it's ikea furniture <laughs> ikea is tearing america apart look 
50% of divorces, marriages end in divorce. The rest are fighting it out at Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> Ikea should be, should be Swedish for relationship purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> Couples are going from do it ourselves to do it your damn self. <laughs> <laughs> and Ikea mm -hmm. is getting over. They're getting over. They got us putting our own stuff together. Our <laughs> own stuff. Mm. <laughs> but, you know, maybe it's me. Muslims are so serious. Wouldn't it be great if more Muslims were funny? I mean, my, my hostages would be like, <laughs> but this guy is hilarious. <laughs> But that'd be scary, though. It'd be really scary because Homeland Security would be all over me. It's just some things a Muslim comic can't say. How'd your show go, Muhammad? I blew it up. <laughs> all units move in. All units move in. <laughs> but there's a big difference between Black Muslims and Muslims from the East. Black Muslims don't take hostages. Can't afford them. Last <laughs> thing a black Muslim needs is another mouth to feed. <laughs> black Muslims don't hide out in mountains. You'll never catch a black Muslim hiding out in a mountain. You can find him at his mama's house. <laughs> a black Muslim in times of trouble, a black Muslim will always run home to his mama. Find him in the basement, eating a bean pie. <laughs> Mama told her about he a good boy. He turned it back on my Jesus. <laughs> he a good boy. And black Muslims don't make bombs. They make bomb threats. But they don't make bombs. I don't get my check. I'm blowing this place up. <laughs> Don't own one stick of dynamite. <laughs> hey, black Muslims, we love cookouts, but we can't enjoy them. People are always asking questions. Who blew up the Twin Towers? Did y'all kill Malcolm? You gonna eat those ribs? <laughs> hey, you've been a great audience. I'm Marcus Muhammad. Thank you. All right. Woo! Good, man. What's up? Marcus, it's, it's been nothing but a joy working with you. And you're so funny. I'm just wondering, are there a lot of uh, comedy clubs in Muslim countries? I mean, is there an improv in Bangladesh? <laughs> oh, yeah, they are. But you got to you gotta pass the Sharia test to get in. <laughs> nice. Very, very nice. Well, man, um, I really do hope you pursue this and, and start, uh, you know, getting out there. Oh yeah, I, I'm a, I intend to. I definitely intend to. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, best of luck to you, man. And uh, you know, I I hope that I see you on, um, you know, evening at the Improv before I see you on CNN. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's go. Let's keep it going. You know, um, in comedy, there's certain things that you just don't see a lot, and one of them is white guys. Take <laughs> me to our next comic. <laughs> No, this next comic, really, really funny. And uh, man, you know, just amazing hair. And I wish I could do it. I, I can't grow this much. But, uh, you know, every time I work with him, my whole time has been looking at his hair going, what kind of conditioner? How do you do that? So let's put your hands together and welcome the very, very funny. You're going to love him. Tim C or Tim Cusack. Yeah. Woo! Tim! All right. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Fun fact. Dean is just kidding, because really, Dean is my hairstylist. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say more? The, the, the guy works magic. I mean, he's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, all right, before I start, just I'd like to get two things just, you know, clear. Uh, number one, I'm an idiot. All right? I mean, I am really stupid. Pretty much my whole life, you know, I've heard the old, you know, the Tim guy, he... He ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. It's like, yeah, I know. Matter of fact, I don't even know where the shed is. <laughs> Matter of fact, why do they keep sharp tools in a shed? I, I couldn't get in the shed if I found the damn shed. 
So, and the other thing that you've already probably thought that you see me here, you thought looking at me going, well, this guy, he looks like a middle-aged leprechaun. It's like, you <laughs> <laughs> know, I know. But you, now you're thinking, hey, but does he like lucky charms? Does he know they're magic? delicious? Pink moons and yellow stars. And whoever came up with that was definitely doing acid. <laughs> <laughs> I, does he know where the pot of gold is? No, because I'm too damn dumb. I can't find the end of the rainbow. <laughs> so, now you're thinking not only is he an idiot, but he's a dumb leprechaun idiot. So <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, being as stupid as I am, it is really, really hard living life these days because of so much technology. Everything has technology connected to it. My son gives me a gift. And of course I open, I look, I'm like, crap, it's got technology connected with a diagram. And I asked my son, hey, can you help me with this? And my son, of course, as usual, every time I ask for help, he's like, ugh, you can't do it. He's like, ah. It's like, well, every time I ask you for help, you sound like you just climbed Mount Everest. <laughs> You're always out of oxygen. It's like, no, I can't do it. He's like, fine. So my son says, you push the power button, hold it for three seconds. Then you download the app. Then you connect it to the settings. It's like, I, I know, but it's just a toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to brush my damn teeth. It's like, come on. I mean, the most sophisticated, technologically gift I gave my dad when I was a little kid was a handprint in clay. <laughs> like, of course, my dad looks at it like, what the hell is this? It's my handprint. Did you do, fall in the mud? No, I need it for you. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with it? Too small for a cheese tray. <laughs> you just look at it. Like, well, that's stupid dumb kid. I mean, it just always comes back to that. And now life is really, really getting scary for me. I mean, I am afraid because our new Lord and Savior, Marky Suckyberg, <laughs> has come up with the metaverse. And he's saying, hey, buddy, we, I have the metaverse. And you're going to have an avatar and you can get together with everybody and, and go places and have meetings and have fun together. Oh, this sounds fantastic for somebody like me. I'm going to go. I can't handle this universe. You want me to make another one? <laughs> I'm going to have an avatar, Marky. Yeah, it's going to be a sniper. And guess who's going to be on the top of my hit list? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you. And yes, I'm an idiot. <laughs> so good, Tim. So good, man. But yeah, you know, I love the leprechaun stuff. And, you know, a lot of people can't tell this on Zoom, but Tim's actually only nine inches tall. <laughs> <laughs> Magic dust. So, 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 Tim, you're also a speaker. Is that correct? Yes. So what's the one thing you learned from this comedy class that you're going to carry over to being a speaker? Um, well, I, I have a lot of improv background, but so I, I use that all the time. But this class has taught me more to be deliberate, really, when I know about a group I'm going to present to, to write some jokes to that group. This is what's helping. I got you. Me. Yeah. I got you. Well, man, really great set, really good material. Um, and I know you're in the corner of a Luby's right now and you got to leave because the lunch rush is hitting. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, Tim, love working with you, man. Hope to hear great things. So thank you, Tim. Yes, yes, Yay! yes. All right. All right. All, right. All right. Well, we're moving it right along, ladies and gentlemen. And this next comic, um, you know, what can you say about a guy who's from, uh, you know, he's from Georgia. Uh, he's very suave. He's very sophisticated. And when him and I hang out, people always look at us like, how did that happen? So please put your hands together uh, for the one and only Tankhead Mo. Yeah, Tankhead. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Well, the truth is, I found out Dean is my real dad. 
<laughs> Any other um, fathers in the room? I'm, hi I'm, I'm, I'm hiding out here away from my four kids. I can't stay long because they're going to find me. <laughs> I, I found dad. Mom said, come home right now. <laughs> it's hard being a father when you didn't grow up with one. I see some of y'all thinking, a black man who didn't grow up with a father? How weird is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here in Atlanta where I grew up with my mom. I didn't have a father. I know how unusual for a black man. <laughs> <laughs> we have a fatal lack of fatherhood in the black community. A father stick around in the black community. That's like a mailman hanging out off in the read your mail. <laughs> <laughs> so it says here your electric demand increased by 15%. <laughs> I don't know why black men don't use condoms and are alerted to child support. It's, it's like we should follow the same policy that stores have. You touch it, you break it, you buy it. Because <laughs> it's hard. It's hard growing up without a without a father having your mom as your male role model. <laughs> but that hasn't affected me at the least. <laughs> By the way, does these jeans make my ass look fat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hasn't affected me at the least. Boy, oh boy, I'm having a bad hair day. <laughs> yeah, you can always tell when a man grew up with just his mom. I mean, I played football, but every time I tackled someone, I would say, I'm sorry, so sorry. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Before I get out of here, I'm taking care of Mo. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Man, so great. Hey, do you mind if I give you a little career advice? I don't mind. Okay. You know, you got a great smile. You need to use it more. <laughs> I'm serious, man. Your smile is so charming. You could sell, you could sell anything with that. It's so good. And uh, so you're from Atlanta, correct? Yes. And you also have a picture of Atlanta behind you. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll just leave that there. That's <laughs> leave it there. You know, because many of us wake up every morning, we're like, where am I? Oh, yeah, the picture on the wall in Atlanta. <laughs> so, man, Tankhead, it's been, I love you, man. And, uh, you know, you live, I live in Dallas and uh, mm -hmm. I know we're a few hours away, but if you ever come up this way, let me know. I mean, this is for everybody, but let me know. I'd love to go have lunch or, you know, just uh, something. Go hang out. Does that sound cool? Sound yeah, cool. Yeah. And what I'm getting at is, could you buy me lunch? I'm not doing well. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's keep it going. Now, uh, next comic, very, very funny. It's about time we got some women in the joint. Yay! Uh, yeah, woo really woo. fresh perspective on everything. Always makes me laugh very hard in class. And I think you're all going to have a fantastic time. Please welcome the one and only Susan Gilman. Hi. Thank you, Dean. I know you like those two women in joints. <laughs> Anyone else here grow up in a large Catholic family? It's hard, you know, because you don't get any attention. Right? Oh my God. So enough about you. It's about me today, okay? <laughs> no one ever asked me if I had homework or if I practiced the clarinet or if I had sex with a priest. <laughs> I got away with a lot. 
So I moved back to Connecticut after living in California for 24 years. And it's been hard, you know, because I really do miss the earthquakes and the mudslides and the fires. And it's been really hard rollerblading in a blizzard. <laughs> Mostly because no one will find me if I fall down. <laughs> So I live with my 87 year old mom and it's a little bit scary sometimes because she overshares everything. Oh, Susan, you wouldn't believe what just happened. Oh my God, I had the best ball movement of my life. <laughs> so relieved. Well, that's great mom, but now we gotta leave Home Depot. <laughs> uh, at least I don't live in her basement. That would be scary. It's dark, it's cold. My brother already lives there. <laughs> it's hard dealing with aging parents, you know, because it's like pouring miracle grill on more miracle grow on their defects. And you know, if she's a little bit selfish now, in 20 years, she's gonna be a bitch on wheels. <laughs> Susan, stop saying that I talk too much. You know you're gonna miss my voice when I'm gone. <laughs> I say, okay, Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> I've been trying to practice meditation yesterday, but it's so stupid. It doesn't work for me, you know? You're supposed to talk to your body parts. Like, okay, feet, I need you to just relax. But my feet talk back. Oh yeah. You've been walking on me all day long, and now you want me to relax? You son of a bitch, that's right. This is your bunion talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I call her Marge Simpson, my bunion. <laughs> anyway, I'm also trying to give up sugar, you know, just be a little bit healthier. And that is not easy because sometimes I will eat a Snickers and then I'll grab an apple really quick, hoping that my body didn't notice. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's like shooting heroin, you know, that's what it's like, you know, and then you go to a Pilates class. Oh, there's spiders on my face, but my pulse rate is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> And that's about it for me, folks. Thanks very much. All right, Susan. <laughs> so, you know, Susan, one of the things everyone needs to understand is, you know, in this class, we're never looking for funny. We're looking for real. And we're looking for what you're actually going through. And I think it's great the way you share everything. And, um, you know, it's also great how you're kind of close to your mom through all this. And just so you all know what I mean by that, her mom is in the closet behind her, actually. <laughs> yes. No, so Susan, how does your mom feel about being part of your act? Does she like it or has she seen it? Like, what is her thoughts about it? Oh, yeah, she loves it. She loves it. And it's why she's in the closet, you know? <laughs> she's yeah. afraid of laughing too hard at her bowel movements. <laughs> wow. That's a good share right there. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you, Susan. So much fun working with you. And uh, man, I wish we all had funny moms like you. That'd be great. <laughs> okay, good. Well, Thanks, look, we're, let's keep it rolling right along. You know, um, certain things in comedy are kind of hard. You know, one of them is, can you be handsome and be funny? Another one is, can you be sexy and be funny? And the third one is, can you make a blue hat work while you're doing comedy? <laughs> <laughs> Well, this next comic's going to answer all three of those questions. Put your hands together for one of my favorites. You're going to love him too. D. Ray Freeman. Woo! Hey, hey. All right, Dean. Thanks for, thanks for uh, that introduction, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, my name is D. Ray Freeman, and I am a leader in my community. Right. You, you can clap for that. It's not a lot of us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you know what's hard about being a Black leader? It's always being referred to as a black leader. I mean, you don't hear white people say, hey, I'm Bob, but I'm a white leader. <laughs> you know, being a black leader is hard because people have really high expectations of me. Like when I take the stage, people expect me to be articulate, to lead with courage. <laughs> it seems like we have the mic, white people are like, Look, Jerry, 
this black fella's gonna sing a song to us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not only am I a black man, but I'm a black man in corporate America. Woo! You can clap for that, not a lot of us. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And you know what's hard about being a black man in corporate America? It's feeling like I'm the only black man in corporate America. <laughs> like, like for me, walking into a WeWork is like being dropped off in outer space. <laughs> White space. <laughs> <laughs> I'm floating around on my little jetpack, searching for blacks. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually it's just me, but every once in a while, you know, I'll look out in the distance and I'll see an, an interesting brown specimen, uh, you know, off in the distance, dark hair, early, you know, kind of curly, unusually large penis. It might be a black dude. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> you know, I'm always asking people, you know, how do you find out if someone is black or not. And there's a test. And white people, you can use this too. <laughs> so all you gotta do is you walk up to your favorite dark person. How dark do you ask? Somewhere between a cafe Americano and a skinny venti latte mochaccino. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in that level. So you just walk up to your favorite dark person, say, uh, turn, put your shoulder up, and you give them the nod. Here's the nod. <laughs> That's not, That's not, right? So you give him a nod. The best thing that can happen, it's the best result, is the brother looks back at you and gives a nod back. <laughs> First thing that can happen, you might get punched in the face. <laughs> hey, I'm D-Ray. That's my time. Thank you all much. D-Ray. <laughs> so smooth. Hey. I got a question. Is that trumpet behind you? Do you play trumpet? Yeah, you actually do. You have for a long time. <laughs> you know, I just, I, I want to say, you know, I think what uh, lighting a room full of candles is to me to try and make a date go my way. That's what a trumpet must be for you. I don't think there's a woman in the world who could come see you and you don't. <laughs> and the next thing you know, your, your blue hat's on the floor by the bed, if you know what I'm saying. So, um, <laughs> So D-Ray, uh, you know, being a, a leader and everything, uh, you'll be using your sense of humor. I mean, you already have a great sense of humor, but are you planning on using any of these skills for presentations or things like that? Uh, most, most definitely. I'm, I'm talking to people every day in different parts of the world, and it's about boring stuff. So I got to bring some funny into it to keep people, you know, engaged. So this helps me a bunch, man. I appreciate the time. Oh, it's so much fun working with you. You know, and if a joke never works, all you got to do... <laughs> all right d-ray love working with you man all right so this next guy this next comic you know i gotta say i just uh he bugs me and the reason is is because we, we, we're so similar the whole time i've been working with him i've been looking at the screen going god this guy's just a total reflection of me we have everything in common which by of course mean nothing because he's funny he's young he's awesome Please put your hands together and welcome the one and only Ryan Merritt. Thank you, Dean. Uh, as you said, uh, I'm Ryan Merritt and uh, I'm, I'm mixed. And the reason I tell you that is because when I grew up, uh, the kids, they used to call me Oreo. Um, but now since then, I've gotten a little older, a little fatter and uh, feel more like a chocolate whoopie pie. <laughs> <laughs> It's just I, I, I tend to eat out too much, you know. Um, you know, you go to the drive through too much when you treat it like it's a drug deal. Uh, the person, they hand you your food. Here you go, sir. Uh, oh, thank you. Hold on. This feels a little light. Um, I think you might have shorted me a couple of nuggets. Could you throw that on the scale, please? <laughs> now, speaking of drive through anybody like Popeyes here? Yeah. yeah. Popeyes has got this new sauce endorsed by Megan the Stallion, this like uh hip hop uh you know icon or whatever. Um it's called hottie sauce. The sauce is called hottie sauce. Uh ironically, not what you become if you eat a lot of that sauce. 
<laughs> I took care of that experiment for you all already. So, uh, but I, uh, I, I do, I try to do think to uh, keep myself healthier. Um, over the summer, uh, I ran a 5K, believe it or not. And uh, people say, I used to hear the stereotype that 5K was like a, a, a white people event, which is ridiculous, you know. Uh, also kind of racist if you think about it. Um, besides the 5K I went to, uh, it was, well, it was mostly white people, but that's not the point. Um, <laughs> the point is that if you're a black guy or a black person at a 5K with a lot of white people, you either want to be in first place or last place because no black person wants to feel like there's a bunch of white people chasing them unless, <laughs> unless you're getting away. <laughs> and they say, um, I, I've heard this thing that said bigger is better, uh, which I'm here to say that that is not true uh, when it comes to phone extensions. I tried to call my lady up on her birthday uh, and her phone extension is so long. By the time I got through, I, I told her I never, wish I never met her, and I hung up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> here's a here's a little little thing I'll leave you with. Uh, it's a little factoid. Did you know that if you practice stand up in the mirror on magic mushrooms, you can be both the audience and the performer at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I am a terrible audience. <laughs> I actually booed myself off stage. <laughs> and I felt bad, so I brought myself back up. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for your time. I've been Ryan Merritt. Hey. Hey. hey, dude. Love it, man. Great observations. You know, and right, I don't want to brag, but you know, and I know it seems weird, but I was trying to get into rap for a while, and my name was going to be 5K. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, you do a lot of stand up. Is that right? I mean, you're out and about doing the work in it and everything, or is, is that not true? Yes, that is uh, as 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 alleged. As alleged. <laughs> so, what's your what's your eventual goal? What would you like to do? Like, uh, would you like to be on Netflix? Would you like to, um, you know, what would you eventually like to do with this? Because you got the why? Trust, do you man. know somebody? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Do you think, no, you think I'd be here if I knew somebody? I don't know anybody, man. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah. So, no, man, you should, you, I hope you get out there and hope I hear great things. You know, I'm, I'm sure we will about you out there working. And, and if that happens, everybody on here is going to be calling you for gigs. So just be ready for that. Yes, sir. Oh, great working with you, Ryan. So much fun, man. Really give him another round. Very, very good. All Thank right. You, right. All right, your next comic, uh, I got to say, you know, teaching these classes for Judy, get to meet a lot of fascinating people. And I've always been kind of intimidated by this next comic. She's got an amazing story because uh, I've never, one, never met anyone of her stature before. And she's going to tell you all about it. So please put your hands together and welcome the one and only, the actual one and only, Elizabeth Sweeney. Yeah. Woo! Thank you, Dean. So does anyone here have goals and dreams in life or had goals? Yeah. Oh, Dean had some goals. Ray had some goals. Susan, Tim, perfect. Well, I love how goals and dreams motivate you to get up in the morning and then they give you purpose in life and then they help you start drinking more and more. That's <laughs> how I felt when I found out I did not make the U.S. Winter Olympic team, but I received a call from Hungary. Would you like to compete for us? We see you are a proud Hungarian. I even <laughs> forgot I was Hungarian. All I knew <laughs> was that Hungarians drink a lot, eat paprika and goulash. So <laughs> I have good news. Uh, did any of you hear about the 2018 Winter Olympian speed skating gold medalist from Hungary, the relay gold medalist? Yeah, first gold medal for Hungary ever in the Winter Olympics. That was not me. I helped balance that out by finishing last in women's freestyle ski half pipe. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Oh, yeah. The judges during my competition going up these 22 foot high walls were like, oh, we're going to place her in 24th place. We noticed that there's only 23 women at this competition. 
but the girl from Ukraine that missed her flight probably would have finished better than her. So we're going to give her 23rd place. But there's some advantages to finishing last at the Olympics. You, you do get sponsorships. Armada Skis told me that they would give me $5,000, put out this big press release, never ever to ski on their skis again. <laughs> Three years later, and I haven't skied on our skis, Armada Skis, and I still don't have $5,000. <laughs> Blue Point Beer did offer me a lifetime supply of beer because I skied my run drunk. <laughs> well, I thought, what is there to do in the Olympic Village? Well, there's 50,000 condoms given out at the Olympic Village. There's actually only 3,000 winter Olympians. So that means Olympians are expected to sleep with 16, 17 people each. So I had to try to do my part. <laughs> I found some um, Russian cops letters, and it, it's pretty hard to find a place to cuddle in the Olympic Village because we're supervised all the time. It's referred to as a happy prison sometimes. But I found some Russian bobs letters, Sergey and Dmitri. Would you like to cuddle with us? Yes, I did want to cuddle with them. So the night before their competition, they were worried about their drug test. We would like your blood for the drug test. So I, I exchanged my blood for theirs. And I'm proud to say I helped the Russians pass their drug test, <laughs> but they failed the pregnancy test. <laughs> <laughs> Condoms at the Olympic Village say do not use, only open in case of emergency. So I was following those instructions. <laughs> and I, I just want a, a guy to date in the real world outside of the Olympics, but it's hard. Guys will come up to me and say, well, I'm as fast as an Olympic skier. I don't want fast. I want someone slow. And if I accept their date, uh, they will turn it back on me and be like, okay, are you going to go to the next Olympics? What can you do to impress me? Hey, dude, when is the last time you were at the gym? Did you ever go to the Olympics? <laughs> Other important guys in my life, like Uber drivers, will ask me the same question. So I'll just give them two stars. Most recently, <laughs> I went on a date with the guy and um, we we're having a nice dinner. He got up and said, oh, I have to go get my COVID vaccine. Then I realized, OK, is that what people are saying nowadays to get out of a out of a weird situation? I have to go get my COVID vaccine. You can use it one time, two times, or three times to get out of a bad date. <laughs> but third time he did that, I said, no, stop. I still have a few thousand condoms left in my pocket from the Olympics. So let's, let's give it a try. I'm a little bit pointy and that's my time. All right, Elizabeth. All right. Good job. And Elizabeth, so, you know, kind of a silly question, but a lot of people are nervous about performing. So what's tougher, doing stand-up or being in the Olympics? I would say um, be the Olympics was, was harder. So stand-up is more fun. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> well, and you came in 24th. That's a great story, but I'll tell you, you're, you're number one in all of our hearts. Okay. Aww. 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 Yeah. So, and Elizabeth, uh, you're, you're going to continue doing stand-up, yes? You're going out there and you're... Because yeah, I yeah, can see you eventually being like a commentator on a show or getting your own special or whatever. You got a really great look and everything. So I hope you stick with it. All right. Thank you, Dean. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, very good. Um, all right. Hey, everybody who's watching, we only have 19 comics left. So... <laughs> No, we only have two comics left. I can't believe it's gone so fast, Judy. We've really, uh, so much talent, so many laughs, but we're really kind of plowing through it. So um, it's awesome. let's just, yeah, let's go ahead and bring up your next comedian. Uh, very, very funny. Um, what can I say other than uh, you're all going to have a fantastic time. And uh, here she is, the one and only <laughs> Susanna Allen. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> uh, I'm Susanna. I am weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get jealous of things I shouldn't. Let me ask you something. Does anyone else miss Harvey Weinstein? 
I know. I know. I know. My friend said, Susanna, are you crazy? He's a molester. He's a rapist, for God's sakes. What are you thinking? Oh, well, I'm, I'm thinking that Weinstein is better than 90% of the dates I've ever had. <laughs> I worked at Hooters. I dated a fry cook <laughs> on parole. We did it in the back seat of a Kia. <laughs> But with Harvey, I get a part in a movie and a night at the Ritz Carlton. I'm I'm gonna climb Harvey Weinstein like a tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's it's too late. He's in jail. Hence. Hence the jealousy. <laughs> I'm also jealous of people who do good things for the right reasons, like the vegans. They're so superior. I'm completely organic and plant-based and self-contained circle of life. That's so annoying. You ever seen a vegan relapse? It's a train wreck. Like a junkie on a heroin binge. They're hiding out in back alleys eating beef jerky, <laughs> cream cheese, running down their chin. <laughs> <laughs> Vegans make me feel bad about my choices in life. They say things like, milk causes cancer. Humans are the only mammals who drink milk into adulthood. Yeah. Well, we're also the only mammals who use credit cards and drive cars. I guess it's because we have to pick up more milk. <laughs> I drink a lot of milk. I also have cancer. I'm not supposed to say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be sad. It's a good kind. <laughs> it's CLL. It's nothing. It's a Cadillac of cancer. It almost makes you wish you have cancer. It's stage zero. <laughs> I, I shouldn't bring it up, but I just think it's hilarious mm -hmm. and ironic that the only treatment available for CLL at stage zero, are you ready for this? A plant-based diet. <laughs> Fucking vegans. <laughs> so now I'm all about the acai and the goji berries and the tofu and the beans and the quinoa. And I feel fucking great. The only thing that's kind of strange is that I've noticed since I stopped eating so many animals, I'm wearing a lot more. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it balances out somehow. That's my time. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Excellent job, Susanna. Thank Excellent you, job. You know, I love your story. I love the, the tells you can tell us. And, um, you know, one of the things that's really surprising to me is that a fry cook at Hooters could have powered a Kia. Um, <laughs> I think he stole it. Yeah, when you first pitched that, I thought you were going to talk about how you made love in the back of a bus, but that's all right. That's all right. So, Susanna, Can I'm glad, you know, you're just, you're just so vibrant. You're so much fun to hang out with, and I'm glad you're taking care of yourself. And uh, I've been asking this question of everybody, but what do you plan on doing with your comedy skills? What Do you, do you want to get out there? What are you going to do with it? Well, um... I, yeah, I would like to get out there. Um, Judy really gave me the best tip of all yesterday. She said, you want your husband to sleep with you? Get out of those flannel pajamas. <laughs> so I think, I think I'm going to do that first. And then, you know, come see you, Dean. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on. 
I love it. Listen, I, Thank you. listen, I can't afford a Kia, but I'll show you a good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Susanna, so much fun working with you. Just much success, wishes of much success for you. All right, everybody. Well, now, <coughs> um, you know, just as I said, in my fifth year of marriage, we're at the end. <laughs> and um, by that, I mean, we're going to bring up your headline or your final comic. Very, very funny. I don't want to give anything away. She's going to talk about where she's from, which is fascinating, and her lifestyle. It's all really great stuff. So let me shut up and let's just get to it. Please welcome Sandra Schmidt. Hi, Sandra. All right. Hey, yeah, my name is Sandra and I'm from Germany. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really great being from Germany because we have all these rules about everything. So, you know, there's no confusion about what you have to do. At a comedy club, it's like this. So you're here to laugh, yeah? Do you understand this? You're here to laugh and have a good time, yeah? Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't laugh at this show? You know, it's perfect. <laughs> Everything here is also really organized. So even sex. So my husband and I, we meet every Wednesday at 6 p.m. sharp. And, it's, <laughs> and then I ask him, so honey, what do you think? Should we have sex on Wednesday instead of Thursday this time? What do you think? Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> <laughs> my husband and i we live in berlin and we actually our flat is located above a brothel so yeah you heard right we live above a place where people get screwed it's something like <laughs> it's something like um you know things get screwed like a car dealership but no it's a brothel i mean it's berlin guys seriously it's really a brothel <laughs> But you don't have to worry, okay? Because we have rules about this as well in Germany. Prostitution is actually legal here. And I think it's really great because it creates a safe environment for everyone. So here's your receipt, sir. As you can see, it's 30 euros for me and even 90% value added tax added on. So everything is in order for your next tax return. <laughs> it's it's perfect. It's a win-win situation. So every time a man goes to a prostitute, Germany earns tax money. We can build new schools. We can build new streets. We have a lot of new streets in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> what we also have in, Ber in Berlin or in Germany in general, which is really annoying though it's we have a lot of anti-vaxxers here and they're really dumb they're really stupid they're really annoying i don't know what's wrong with these people my mom is an anti-vaxxer <laughs> <laughs> and i always argue with her because um yeah i want to get into you know what's going on with her and it's really difficult but the other day i was quite touched by what she said she said sandra I respect you for being vaccinated as well. And I was like, oh, this shows she has, a, she has a heart. I mean, she lost her brain already, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will leave you. I will leave you now with one last information about Germany. In Germany, we don't like to share things. So the other day, I threw a donut out of the window because I don't want to share with my kids. Mom, can I have some bites? Mom, can I have a donut? No, we don't have any donuts left, sorry. But later that day, I walked downstairs to look at the donut. I was still a little bit hungry. The donut looked disastrous. It was so smashed and it had flies everywhere. It was disgusting but it was still really delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. I'm Sandra Schmidt from Berlin. All right. <laughs> Yay. Well done. So I love that you live upstairs from a brothel. 
And that, uh, you know, during your whole set just now, that's all we were all thinking about. <laughs> yes, she's very funny, but I bet a guy's getting laid below her. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sandra, what's this comedy scene like in Germany? Is there, are there a ton of comedy clubs or not much? Like, what's it like over there? Well, it's all up and pumping now in Berlin. So we have a, a lot of new clubs opening up. You know, everyone is doing comedy at the moment in Berlin. So it's really great. Yeah, you should all come to Berlin and, you know, check out. We have English speaking comedy here as well. Ooh, nice. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, let's do that, you know, and um, we'll come see you. We'll go to a comedy club. We'll go downstairs. Don't ask us any questions. <laughs> <laughs> but Sandra, very, very funny. Loved working with you. You're great. Um, and so everybody, let's give a big round of applause to all the fantastic comics. Yes. Um, and I'm going to hand it back to Judy in a minute, and she'll tell you about there's uh, online classes that we teach. You know, again, we've got people from oh, yes. and all over. So, Judy, let them know how they oh can Oh, my God. The Thanks. And Dean, look, you made a, a German funny. I laughed. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And Sandra's right. There's a wonderful comedy scene in Berlin. I did a, a show at Berlin at one of the English speaking nights at a club and I introduced myself as a Jewish comic and I said, I don't see there's a lot of them. What happened? Did something happen here <laughs> or not as many to it? <laughs> Sandra, oh, thank good. you so much. Really great set. And Dean, thank you so much. And all the comics. Um, some of you might be wondering, hey, I might be funny. Or I don't know if I'm funny. I might be humor impaired. <laughs> I might be like, I want to know, can I do this? Well, come to our workshop. It's really fun. We have one starting soon. And I put the link in the, in the chat. Um, so, you know, come join us. And, and basically what we do is just ask you what's wrong in your life. And then we work to make it funny. And we had a wonderful group. And Dean, to you, you did a great job. Look at what you did. You made a Muslim funny. <laughs> I know a this German class sounds man. like this. Yeah. <laughs> we had it to... sounds like the setup to a joke. An Olympian, a Muslim, and a German walked into a bar. Oh, it does. <laughs> no, it sounds like an episode of Gilligan's Island. The Muslim, right. the German lady, the guy on mushrooms, and living on top of a brothel. All the scenes. Oh, the terrible voice. Thank you all for coming, everybody. Love you being here. Thank you for being here. Take care, Thank everybody. You, Judy. You too. Awesome. Yeah, and all the comics. Thank you. All awesome the comics. Come join comics. us in the other room. Come join awesome. us in the other room where we usually meet. And we'll, we'll talk do. to you all. We'll Yes, come meet us in the other room and just an awesome group of comics. Thank you so much for being here. Roll music. Thank you. Thank you.